Uh, Representative Brad Wenstrup, welcome again to the Bill Cunningham Show. And Congressman, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm glad to be with you. There's so much to talk <laughs> about. Uh, one cor one correction, I am a colonel. But a colonel. That's okay. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. a major. That's okay. Now, at some point, could you become a brigadier general? I mean, that's the next step, right? Yeah, I think uh, my retirement will come uh, before that happens. Uh, let's talk about military matters, talk about what's happening in the schools, talk about the southern border in Ukraine. Uh, this morning, and, and this is a sidelight, uh, I watched Anthony Fauci, I think on ABC, talk about what's going to happen uh, next with this new variant, which is unbelievable. And he's going to have to determine, he says, each individual is going to have to assess their own risks. Maybe mask wearing will be required again. I'm watching this. I'm sticking my index finger down my throat to get sick. And then we find out there was a super spreader event the Washington so-called gridiron party, and with at least 73 of the rich and powerful politicians, all without masks. Uh, most of them, have t a lot of them turn up sick, Nancy Pelosi, and we're being told that, uh, of course, the attorney general has it, et cetera. We're being told the president's going to be next because him and Nancy Pelosi were so excited about Judge uh, Contengi Brown Jackson. They were almost, uh, uh, they were like teenage, uh, on a teenage day kissing each other. Two people in their 80s, unbelievable. And now Nancy Pelosi has it, could have passed it off to uh, the president. Uh, assuming you didn't hear Fauci this morning on ABC News talking about mask wearing indoors again, I about lost my mind. Put on your doctor hat, and then we're going to talk about a father, talk about what's happened in New Jersey and Maryland, sexualizing children, talk about Disney, talk about the southern border, talk about the butcher of, uh, of Baghdad, the butcher of Syria is going to take over the, the Russian army. But first of all, tell me your piece on Fauci and what's happening in Washington, because it's rules for thee and not for me. School kids in L.A. and New York have to wear a mask, but if you're an 80-year-old politician, you can kiss each other, no problem. Please explain. Well, the hypocrisy coming from the Democrat leadership and throughout their whole party, it seems, it just keeps going on and on. I, I wondered what was going on this past week when all of a sudden in committee, a lot of the Democrats were wearing masks. And, and I didn't didn't know before that they had some super spreader party, I guess. And maybe it's a new variant. Maybe it's just a Democrat variant. I don't know. I didn't see Republicans uh, getting sick or or wearing masks so it must have come from an event that they where they were all together uh it's it, maybe they weren't wearing masks at the party no, i no, guess they weren't, they weren't. No. you know but they're going to make other people do it it just goes on and on and on and quite frankly uh, i don't really think that america benefits much from hearing from dr fauci anymore no, no. i've said for some time that america should be hearing from 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 physicians that are actually treating COVID patients that can actually articulate what is happening with COVID. You know, just, just very quickly as best I can, Bill, you know, when we, when we were developing the vaccines, we knew they were highly effective, but we also knew that people got the virus anyway. Right, right. They didn't get as sick. We also have always known that viruses produce variants. So this is an earth shattering news. Uh, I think if you have vulnerabilities, if you have some comorbidities, if you're immunosuppressed, if you're obese, if you have diabetes, if you have any of these underlying conditions that put you at risk for infection, that even the common cold especially could be damaging to you, then, then, you, then you take all your precautions. But by the way, that conversation doesn't have to take place and shouldn't have to take place with Dr. Fauci. How about with your doctor? Yeah, I look at yeah. the mandates that the president put out. This man has has no knowledge of health care, has never been in health care, and he sits in the White House and says, you have to get this vaccine into your arm or you'll lose your job. Not explaining to you why, not explaining to you who's at risk, and, and he doesn't really have the wherewithal to do that as well as your doctor certainly would. We've taken the doctors out of the equation, and I guess America is only going to have one physician now, and that's Fauci, and he doesn't treat patients. If he does, it's pretty infrequent. You know, Congressman, we have a situation where the elite in Washington, especially Democrats, are hobnobbing and kissing each other. Now most are getting infected, maybe not hospitalized, I hope. But, however, I, I was on a plane on, uh, on Saturday, and guess what? We had to wear a mask. If you're a third grader, you got to wear a mask. If you're in a big city, you got to wear a mask. But if you're a Washington elite in your 80s, 
kissing and hugging each other. You don't have to wear a mask. The hypocrisy is incredible. Also under Title 42, I guess in, at then about five or six weeks, Biden says someone told him what to say, that we're going to let more and more illegal aliens in without testing, without masks, and probably with COVID. Either we're in the middle of this epidemic still, this pandemic, or not. I think we're not. Let us decide how to run things. But you can't be so disingenuous as saying that we're in some great pandemic, that school kids still have to be masked in urban areas. However, the southern border is wide open, and Democrats can eat shrimp and uh, Swedish meatballs and, and let wine dine and pocket wine each other and kiss. That's no problem with no mask on. The hypocrisy is ridiculous. Before uh, we continue with the Ukraine, we got to talk about the Ukraine. I have this story out of uh, New Jersey and another one out of Maryland. And uh, you're a father. I think your kids are about this age that uh, pre-kindergarten students in Maryland will learn about gender identity and sexual expressions, including, quote, how to recognize and respect that people express themselves in many different ways. There's different types of families, single parent, same gender, intergenerational, blended, interracial, adoptive, foster, etc. And there's more and more of this of pre-kindergartens talking about body parts. You're going to have to be able to identify two different body parts of the opposite gender that someone identifies with. And under the uh, gender identity and expression subcategory, quote, fa family life and human sexuality, that uh, pre-K students, that, what is that, five or six years old, should recognize and respect that people have different body parts. H how do you feel about a six or seven-year-old in the state of New Jersey being instructed by the state to identify two body parts of the opposite gender. Well, you know, these are these are kids that traditionally haven't even been taught uh, how babies are born yet. And when you take health class and when you take science class, even at the grade school level, you, t you typically are taught what the XX chromosomes are and what the XY chromosomes are and and how a child is born either male or female. Maybe they don't teach that anymore. No, no. So and and these are the people that want to say science is real, yet they just want to uh, avert it altogether. Look, there's a reason that you're seeing privates uh, fill up with with in many cases Catholic schools with non-Catholics. You have people that's like I will raise my children and I will teach them uh, these types of things when the time is right. And a lot of these things, things they'll just learn through society itself, but they don't have to be taught in the classroom. And it isn't necessarily normal. It was always called dysphoria and things like that. And so now, all of a sudden, there's this push from the left, the far left, really to, to say, this is what it is, and you have to understand it, and we're going to try and make it sound like it's factual. Well, a lot of these things aren't factual, and so people will decide, you know what, parents will decide what they want for their children, and you're going to see like you saw in Virginia when it comes to elections. Uh, you know, keep it up, but people are going yeah. to move out of these states. Parents are going to get engaged and they are getting engaged they're running for school board they have had it with this stuff I, it is just so it's just so unbelievable to me that this is what people think about all day long and they think that that's the most important thing for a child to learn and they think and they think and there's people in this administration left and right that think parents shouldn't have any say in their children's right. upbringing no it's question. really up to the government and well, and, and this is not freedom. This is not the America we know. You know, when liberal Democrats cannot win in San Francisco, that's a problem. Let me share with you some of the uh, teaching materials at the Disney employee that employees have to understand certain terms, which uh, I, even I don't understand most uh, a lot of these terms. And that Disney and, and the, the, the CEO of Disney, I can only imagine what Roy and Walt Disney would have to say about their company, where it used to be instead of 60 Minutes when I was a kid, I'd watch Tinkerbell at the castle throwing dust everywhere. Uh, I'd watch, uh, of course, Mickey. I'd watch Pluto. I watch Minnie. Now there's no Mickey or Minnie. They're like transgender. To work at uh, to work at Disney, you have to know what it means to be asexual, biphobic, bisexual, cisgender, coming out, gay, gender binary. Gender dysphoria, gender expansive, gender expression, gender fluid, gender identity, gender nonconforming, gender queer. That now you can say the word queer, I think. Gender queer, homophobia, intersex, lesbian, LBGTQ plus, 
non-binary, outing, pansexual, queer, that's their term, not mine, questioning, same gender loving, sex assigned at birth, sexual orientation, transgender, transitioning, and more. Congressman Brad Winstrup, do you want your child being taught this when I thought reading, writing, and arithmetic was a big deal? And would you would you let one of your relatives, if you had power, to work at Disney when this is kind of crap they're being taught instead of Pluto? Yeah, it's it's really sad. You know, I'm I'm like you. I grew up watching Disney, and you know, you like the stories that they had yeah. to tell. It was wholesome. I think that Walt Disney would be turning in his grave, oh, oh. and probably probably is. This was never what he intended, and I don't understand uh, why this is all that some people can think about. That it actually drives a large corporation like that to make this their highest priority. Well, I think you know, just like you're seeing with voting, you're going to see people. You know, walk with the, you know, walk away from Disney. They'll walk away. They'll use their feet and say, you know, that's this is enough. And I don't know why this is so important to you. It's really kind of bizarre to me uh, that their values are are very different than what I think mainstream yeah. America is, yeah. and certainly the values that this country was founded on. And and it's you know you know in my mind in a lot of ways, hey, to somebody you reach adult age, this and that you. You go do what you want. Sure. This is a free country. Have at it. I don't have to approve of it, but it doesn't mean I hate you, and it doesn't no. mean no. Uh, that, no. you know, no. I just don't need to engage with it, but it's not something that you need to be teaching my children at this age. It, 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 well, it just doesn't have a role there. Uh, you and, know, I'm uh, like you, Congressman. After 18, if you want to cross-dress, if you want to have gender reassignment surgery, if you're suffering from some difficulty that you think you're a man trapped in a woman's body, let's face it, I was a man trapped in a woman's body until I was and married. Born. <laughs> and until, until I was born. And, and a, a, a bright guy said that thing. I love that thing. I put it on my Twitter account. And, and all of a sudden, I became, I was born. And guess what? I became, I was male. And as a doctor, there's one or the other. We all begin as female. We all begin with Michelle Pfeiffer. And uh, with all the beautiful on the left, and during the in utero, we we go from Dolly Parton over to Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, and some of us kind of stop in the middle. And so, if you're kind of like, well, I feel like I'm a woman in a man's body. Guess what? Well, that's okay. When you're 18, 19, or 20, do what you got to do. And I want nothing bad. I would hire someone. I've said this before. You may not agree with me, but I have I voted for gay politicians. Democrat and or Republican, I don't care what you do in the bedroom. I don't think it's important. I want you to do your damn job. Now, let's talk about Ukraine. This is deadly serious this week because I guess the butcher of Syria has taken over. Uh, Vladimir Putin does not believe that his troops have been brutal enough. And now they're going to go this week and next week into the Donbass, which I understand is flat topography and is perfect for the anti-tank, anti-aircraft missiles, which badly are needed. I watched one of the interviews this morning with Zelensky, and he was just decrying the fact that he needs more weapons. And you're on the Defense Intelligence Committee. What are the one or two things that has most surprised you about what's happened in the Ukraine so far? And does this mean they necessarily have won? Well, I... <laughs> I tell you, when I look at Putin, I, I just think, did this man even have a mother? I mean, uh, is there, it, it's just so strange that he is this uh, torturous, I guess, if you will. Um, you know, I think what has impressed me is the strength of the Ukrainians. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they have been fighting. You, you've seen that um, they had this 40-mile convoy of a variety of, of weaponry and they dispersed. They were on their way to Kiev, and they dispersed. Now he's focusing back on the east, which is where he claimed uh, that was the very beginning of this. And these are Russian-speaking people, and they're independent. He used all the narratives he created, and uh, he was going in to liberate them. But it hasn't happened that way. Uh, so, you know, I'm just I, I am surprised um, that we haven't done more, and that of course I'm surprised that we didn't do more beforehand because. Right. The intelligence commu the community got it right. We knew how they were postured. You don't just do an exercise and have blood and plasma and all those types of things. They were going to invade. We should have done a whole lot more before, but that's water under the bridge. And, you know, now we're trying to get aid. We've, I've got a bill for I'm on for more humanitarian aid, and that would be for protection of the people and, and for obviously a nutrition and, and, and a safe place to be. Right. But, uh, 
they're being urged to flee now. The people in Ukraine are being urged to flee. I've been disgusted, angered, and I think the Ukrainian people have been inspired to continue the fight when you see things like the the massacre you know, you the world is is calling for war crimes and the yeah. US has officially said that uh, you know we know that Russia assisted Syria with bioweapons you know it, it certainly looked like that um, they they're capable of this that's why they accuse you know Ukrainians of having bioweapons uh, I I don't know I'm I'm just amazed and I will tell you Putin has brought Europe together, and some have been stronger than others. Uh, some uh, European leaders have actually gone to visit Zelensky. That's a good sign. I would like to see our president do that. I don't think that's going to happen. No. Uh, so there, the other things that are bizarre to me is that in this whole process, you know, Biden trusted China and asked them for the, their help. Well, they're in, in on this with Putin. Right. And then China goes and tells Putin. Right. It's just one bizarre thing after another. And then the gaffes coming from the president when he tells our troops, you'll see what's going on when you get there. When you get to Ukraine. Uh, that, oh. Yeah, oh. yeah. And that, tell, that, that gives Putin the opportunity to say, oh, see, they are being aggressive. They are going to come in. And so, therefore, I'm just defending myself. I mean, it, it, it's really a shame all the things uh, that have taken pay, place. Um, but... You know, the Ukrainians well, have done well, and they're continuing the fight, you know, and we got to be there with them. You know, one and thing, I want them to have planes. All, all they got. Give them, give them everything they need, and then if this thing gets bigger, I don't know if this is 1939 or 1979. I pray, in a sense, it's 1979 and not 1939 with a world war coming. Congressman, we got to go. Once again, thanks for coming on the Bill Cunningham Show. We wish you well. And kindergarten students being taught about oral sex. Democrats consider that mainstream. I consider it a sin and a crime. And Congressman Brad Wenster, once again, thank you for coming on the Bill Cunningham Show. My friend will do it again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Bye.